today we're talking about choosing the best diet for you. Welcome back, Fit Squad. Today, I want to talk about choosing the best diet for you. So you're thinking of changing things up a little. You're thinking that your current nutrition habits seem to be the cause of many health problems. Perhaps you're eating too much or maybe you're eating too little. The more likely answer is that you're probably just eating the wrong foods or you're simply how you're eating them. You see, timing and frequency of meals can also play a role in how your body processes and uses nutrition. So what are the solutions? Well, these days there are all sorts of options and many of them have well-documented science behind them. Some diet nutrition plans are designed by experts and nutrition enthusiasts, but which one is the best? And is there really a best? Let's take a look at some of these diet trends and break down their effectiveness. Here's a quick review of the top six diet trends and how good they are for you. Well, let's start with Atkins. And like many of the diets you'll learn about in this video, Atkins finds its origins and appeal in the call for healthy weight loss. It was developed in 1972 by Dr. Robert Atkins and quickly gained popularity through the award-winning book in which the diet was introduced. So what exactly is the Atkins diet? Well, in a nutshell, the Atkins diet is a low-carb, high-fat diet. Like other low-carb diets, this one came into popularity due to the scientific understanding that one of the major causes of obesity and metabolic disease was the consumption of excess refined carbohydrates. And because the American diet largely consists of sugary processed foods, the exposure to obesity-causing eating options is almost inescapable without knowledge and foresight. This is what we understand now. But back in the day, when Atkins first came out, the diet was bashed in the mainstream nutrition culture. That's because at the time, fat was seen as the reason behind the obesity crisis and rising average body fat levels in the general population. It made sense to assume that the more fat you ate, the more fat you got. But science doesn't care about your assumptions. And as more and more research was done, it was discovered that high levels of processed carbs were in fact more of a problem when it came to weight gain than high levels of fat. The reduction in carbs also leaves the door open for an increase in protein intake, which is ideal for weight loss. That's because protein is the most satiating macronutrient. That means it makes you feel fuller with less of it consumed than fat or carbs. Implementing the Atkins diet is easier said than done, and perhaps that's where the drawbacks come in. You see, Atkins requires a four-phase approach in order to effectively benefit from what the diet promises. In the first phase, you'll need to drastically cut your carb intake down to a minimum of 20 grams each day. From phase two going up to four, you will gradually reintroduce healthy carbs to a certain level where you will then maintain the diet. Now, in order to avoid the pitfalls of unhealthy carbs, the Atkins diet advises you to take a pass on these foods. Fat-free and low-fat foods grains like wheat, rice, rye, barley, high-carb high fruits like bananas, grapes, apples, high-carb vegetables like carrots, onions, and tomatoes, legumes like cashews, beans, peas, and peanuts, and starches like bread, pasta, and pastries, and sugar like candy, desserts, soda and fruit juice, and trans fats, which is margarine, fast food, and snack foods. That's the Atkins diet in a nutshell, and in my opinion, it's a bit extreme from a micromanagement perspective. Having to plan or remember all the figures and measurements for each phase is a bit of a headache, but if healthy weight loss is what you're after, the proof is in the pudding, just as long as you don't eat it. <laughs> Next up is the Banting approach, which is another high-fat, low-carb diet that found its origins sometimes before the obesity pandemic was gaining notoriety in the US. And by some time before, I mean over a century, so you see low carb living is absolutely nothing new. The diet, however, was founded by a humble postman named William Banting. William Banting had a serious weight problem, so he went to a doctor and the doctor told him to cut down on the carbs. By limiting the intake of starch and sugar, Banting managed to treat his obesity and regain a healthy body composition. 
Through this experience, he went on to write a book called The Letter of Corpulence. This little book would go on to be one of the world's first diet revolutions. And the name Banting would become synonymous with dieting for weight loss for some time to come. Today, the Banting approach has seen a resurgence. It's even included as a submenu by many restaurants and eateries in the US and globally. So how does it work? Well, Banting is a little more intuitive than Atkins in that it doesn't require a strict protocol in order for you to follow the plan. It was developed during a time where we didn't have as in-depth of an idea of nutritional science as we do today. So following Banting simply required that you eliminate certain foods and add more of others. Foods to exclude in Banting include starchy foods like bread and pasta, starchy vegetables like turnips and potatoes, beer and other forms of alcohol, sugar and sweets, butter and milk. The Banting concept was expanded on by world-renowned nutrition expert, Dr. Tim Noakes in his book, Real Meal Revolution. In it, he lays out Banting into four distinct steps, which incidentally bear similarities to the Atkins system. These steps are observation, restoration, transformation, and preservation. Banting is also the first mainstream example of a gluten-free diet and is a popular option for those who choose to follow a gluten-free lifestyle. Now, next up is keto. By now, most people have heard of keto. In fact, it's become the poster child for high-fat, low-carb eating. But unlike the other diets I've mentioned, keto wasn't thought up by a doctor or weight loss guru. Instead, it wasn't developed by the intellect and educated design of another person. You see, keto is a built-in function of human biology. Going keto simply means tapping into this fundamental system for the benefit of your health. Keto's popularity is also entrenched in the quest for healthy weight loss, and here's how it works. Your body uses macronutrients, carbs, fats, and protein for growth, repair, recovery, and energy. Primarily, your body, especially your brain, will turn to carbs for this. However, your body is designed to adapt to discrepancies in food source availability. When such a discrepancy results in a lack of carbs, your body switches to using fat as its preferred source. It does this by converting fat into ketone bodies in the liver, which can then be used as fuel for metabolic activity. This use of fat instead of carbs means your body will more eagerly tap into your body's fat stores, resulting in accelerated body fat loss. The key to keto is limiting carb intake and doing so by a wide margin. It also means ramping up fat intake by a lot too. The general rule is 75 to 85% fat and five to 10% carbs with the rest being protein. Keto does have its drawbacks, such as the dreaded keto flu, a temporary condition where one experiences flu-like symptoms due to the adjustment required to settle into ketosis. Keto was once treated as the silver bullet in healthy fat loss. But as with most diets, you'll soon learn that the one size never fits all. Keto is a very sensitive mechanism, and to gain real benefits, you need to approach it with enough knowledge and research. Next up, we have the paleo diet. The paleo diet is a system of eating more than a specific diet, although there are certain preferred and restricted foods. It's a more intuitive approach that simply deals with the quality of food rather than the quantity and frequency. Paleo is short for Paleolithic. This represents a time in human history before settled agriculture took hold in our lives. In paleo terms, humans ate from their habitat as they found it. We hunted and gathered our food. That means our diets were very seasonal and with a mixed variety. In a modern context, a paleo-like diet would include lean meats, fruits, and nuts. Basically anything that could as easily be caught or harvested in the wild as it could be thrown into your supermarket shopping cart. That means processed foods are a no-no, and anything that would require agriculture to the source is also out of the question. That takes all dairy products and cereal grains off the menu. The goal of paleo is to feed the body the way it was meant to be fed, like a caveman, so to speak. But what is a caveman? And was there only one style of paleolithic living? Well, that's where the whole argument of paleo as the best and ultimate method of dieting starts to 
unravel a bit. The world is a big place, and across the vast expanse of geography, different ways of living and naturally eating have existed. To decide that one prehistoric method of nutrition is the one everyone should follow is just as faulty as any of the other modern fad diet claims. And that brings us to approach number five, which is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is another nutritional hot topic. And like mentioned earlier, this approach isn't so much about the particular foods you eat as it is about how you eat. With intermittent fasting, you basically limit the window period in which you can eat each day. The common trend is to allow for just eight hours of food intake per day, starting from what would normally be close to lunchtime and ending a couple hours before bedtime. That means an average of 16 hours each day of no eating. The benefits of intermittent fasting are linked to an increase in growth hormone levels, which promotes cellular genesis and tissue recovery, leading to some reported anti-aging effects. An extreme form of intermittent fasting is the one meal a day protocol, or OMAD. This has you eating just once a day, anything you like. I have to disagree with this one personally, as eating anything you want just because it fits your calorie requirements is a foolish approach. You need a variety of nutrients in order to function healthily, and with one meal a day, even if it's good, healthy food, you develop a higher risk of dietary deficiencies. A varied diet spread across multiple meals throughout the day is the best way to ensure you're getting all the stuff you need. Finally, we have the vegan diet. Now, the vegan diet is pretty well documented throughout human history. The idea of a purely plant-based or animal-free diet is nothing new. However, the motivating factors and culture surrounding it today are totally new. Because of this, veganism is more than a diet. It's a culture and an ideology. Most people turn to a plant-based, animal-free lifestyle for one of several ethical reasons, the most prominent being the animal rights movement. It is true that the consumer demands for meat and animal products have led to a crazy industrial upscaling of livestock raising and slaughtering methods. The result is factory farming, a method of mass livestock farming most would consider inhumane. Cramped conditions and limited access to natural life functions, all of which culminate in a cruel death, can sway even the hardest heart. Another popular reason for plant-based living is the damage raising animals for food has on the environment. In order for a successful meat-producing venture to take place, vast tracts of land are required leading to deforestation and habitat destruction. Plus the resources required such as food and water can take away from immediate human needs. Cattle farming has also been linked to atmospheric pollution due to the large volumes of methane produced. And some people choose vegan lifestyle purely for health reasons, whether it's to lose weight or avoid allergies and inflammation. The single drawback with the complete exclusion of animal products from the diet is that certain nutrients are not abundant or available from a purely plant-based diet. Because of this, a vegan diet requires some tweaks in the way of supplementation in order to work effectively. So there you have it, six of the most popular diets, but the question is, which one is best? Well, if you've been paying attention, the answer to that is all of them and none of them. That's because all of these practices have something useful to offer. None of them works for everyone. Your food, your nutrition, and your diet is your story. It is as individual as the strands of DNA in your cells and the prints on the tips of your fingers. So many things need to be considered. Your genetics, current state of health, allergies, and sensitivities. Even your finances, what food you have access to, and just your general preference all play a role. Your goals also need to be taken into account. A diet aimed at weight loss isn't ideal if you're trying to pack on muscle. Now, if you've been following us here at Life Renew, then you know that we take a very scientific and results-driven approach to nutrition, supplementation, and exercise. And it all comes down to your body type, your goals, and your health. We'll cover more about all this in a future video. Until then, if you have any questions you feel weren't answered in this video, please drop us a comment and we'll get back to you. 
If you're looking for ways to speed up your progress and lose weight, build muscle, or you just want to feel better, be sure to check out our online store, which you can find at liferenew.com. You'll find a variety of products designed to help you reach your fitness goals faster, regardless of what these goals are. I'll also drop a link in the description so it's easier for you to find. Thanks for watching and be sure to like our channel and click the bell so you don't miss any of our future Fit Squad videos. Our mission at Life Renew is to share real world information that really works through the Fit Squad movement that's taking the industry by storm right now. We are here to help and support you to achieve your health and fitness goals so you can get into and live in the healthiest version of yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.